Okay, this video will be still on uh, subgroups and we begin with this um, theorem on subgroups. So the um, the set generated by A so we this means A, A2, A3, etc. Uh, this set is also a subgroup of G. Okay, in, now in, in the right language. Let G be a group and let A be any element of G. Then, so this is this set the set generated by A, so the set A to the power of n, such that n is uh, an integer, is a subgroup of G. A to the power of 0 is defined to be the, ident the identity. So since if, if A is in G, this um, set is a subgroup of G. The proof is really uh, simple. So let A to the power of N and A to the power of M be elements from this set. Okay. Um, then um, a to the power of n times a to the power of m inverse is a to the power of n minus m and of course this will be in a so, by the one-step subgroup test, and I remind you the the the, the sub the, the one-step subgroup test says let G be a group in H a non-empty subset of G. So if H is a non-empty subset of G, H is a subgroup of G if H is closed under division. That is, if A times the inverse of B is in H for any A and B. So for all A and B in H, if A times the inverse of B is in H, this means that H is a subgroup of G. Okay? So we picked two elements in the set and an times the inverse of am is a n minus m and this is in the in, in, in the same form this is in the form of this set okay so by the one step subgroup test uh, So this, imp this implies that A is a subgroup of G by the one-step um, by the one-step subgroup test and this concludes the proof this um, subgroup generated by A from this theorem is called the cyclic the 
subgroup generated by A. Um, let me call your attention for the fact that A to the power of minus 2, and we can also have elements here. A minus 1, A0, A1, A2, etc. might have uh, infinitely many entries, okay? Because the set is A to the power of n, where n is an integer, okay? Um, so, for any integer, there will be an element, okay? So, this is infinite. Um, so, oh, another thing I want to show you is a to the power of i times a to the power of g equals a to the power of i plus j. And that equals a to the power of j plus i which is equal to a to the power of j times a to the power of i. Okay, so uh, we can say that uh, um, every cyclic group is a billion. This is very important. Okay? So we can see an example, okay? For instance, Z10 under addition. So Z10 would be 0, 1, 2, etc. Of course, addition module 10, okay? Uh, so 5 plus 5, 0. Okay? Okay. We can... Let us pick any element. Let us say... I don't know. Let us pick 2, for instance. Okay? And let us check if it is true the previous uh, theorem. So, what would be the set generated by 2? The, what would be the cyclic subgroup of G of Z10 generated by 2. So the set would be so 2 uh, plus 2 4 plus 2 6 plus 2 8 plus 2 0. Okay? Do not forget that if A to the power of Fn if you are talking about addition this means N A. Okay. So now you can check by your favorite test um, that uh, the cyclic uh, subgroup of Z10 generated by 2 it is in fact a subgroup. Okay. Um, one is it close to the operation? Yes, it is. If you add two plus four, you get six. Six is here. If you add six plus four, you get zero. Zero is here. You see, if you have, if you add six plus two, you get eight. If you add eight plus two, you get zero. Okay, so yes, it is close to the operation. What about the identity? Well, the identity of Z10 is 0, okay? So, the, the Z10 identity is in this set, okay? So, yes, checked. Does any element have an inverse? Well, yes, for instance, 2. What is the inverse? Well, the inverse is the one that if you perform the operation, 
is a, one element that if you perform the operation with you get the identity so 2 if you add 8 to 2 you get 0 so yes this element has an inverse what about 4 well 4 plus 6 you get 0 0 is the identity 4 as a uh, an inverse what about 6 well if you add 4 to 6 you get 0 so yes 6 as an uh, an inverse 8 as an inverse 0 is the inverse of itself so yes 3 every element in in the set uh, there is for for every element in the set there is a a inverse in the set okay so yes uh, uh, this cyclic the cyclic subgroup yes it is a a subgroup of z then another example is this dihedral group of order um, of order 2 to, to n so I'm considering the order of the n is 2 n okay so um, let R I'm going to consider this um, are the rotation okay be a rotation uh, 360 degrees dividing by n degrees so Rn will be the identity that will be a rotation of 360 degrees so here it's like a complete turn okay so that will uh, here here starting here sorry um, so a complete turn around and you get here okay that's a rotation of 360 degrees okay and that will be the identity r n plus 1 is r n times r 1 okay so that will be a one rotation okay of 360 degrees divided by n okay um, this uh, this might be confusing because it looks like I have one two three four five um, points no I, I have many other points okay uh, I should I should leave this open okay or yes more points there, there'll be more points around here okay so r n times a root ro another rotation a rotation of 360 dividing by n degrees will be equal to r n plus one okay so that 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 will be the next rotation okay and then r2 etc till the last last one okay so um, we will have a cyclic subgroup of dn we'll have a cyclic subgroup of rotations of 306 degrees divided by n okay and that will be the, the set of the identity first rotation etc till the last one okay so we see here that the the powers of r these powers of rotation they cycle back periodically with period n okay so if we raise r to successive p positive powers is the same as moving um, clockwise around the, the circle one node at the time one node then another node another node okay now here moving clockwise or 
counterclockwise that will be the same okay we will still have the same um, uh, periods okay if we move one node at a time okay so this is this is the um, cyclic subgroup of rotations rotations of 360 divided by n degrees okay of the the the, the n the dihedral group of order 2n